The budget deal. What did they just sneak by us? Coming up next on Deceptions of the Ages News. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Deceptions of the Ages News. I would just like to tell you guys thank you. We have reached a thousand subscribers, and that is such a huge milestone for a YouTube channel. And we did it in just three months. So I have to th thank you guys again. And if you haven't yet, oh, watch out, here it comes. If you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button. You're really going to like the content we put out, and it really keeps you aware of what's going on in the world today, and keeps you aware of all of the deceptions of the ages. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to say to you guys is, if you watched the beginning of the video, you saw a quote from my book, Deceptions of the Ages, where they have this trick where while you're watching something here, they're doing something over there. So the uh, show that they're putting on now with the Clintons and the email servers, yes, this is all very serious stuff, but it is nothing compared to what uh, just happened last Thursday when they passed uh, the budget. I'm going to ask you to bear with me for a second because we're going to take a trip back in our way back machine and we're going to go back to the year 1929. Now, a self-made millionaire, which would be a self-made billionaire today, is in the White House. His name is Herbert Hoover, and everybody loves him because he is the ideal American. And um, the economy is prospering. Uh, people are just making money hand over fist, and they're making money on this thing called the stock market, which was made available and which was made almost secure, as people thought, by the uh, Federal Reserve. So uh, in 1929, when Herbert Hoover is president, uh, people are doing things like buying on credit. And they're not only buying houses on credit and cars on credit, they're buying stocks on credit. So just remember that for a second. Does that sound familiar? Everybody's buying everything on credit. Have you heard the people were taking out loans to buy Bitcoin on credit? And what? look what happened to Bitcoin right after that. Okay, so the sucker play has been uh, put in motion. Now, in 1929, when we had a conservative Republican in the White House uh, who believed in a tight fiscal policy, which means he didn't want to spend any money and certainly wouldn't put the country in debt, guess what? The bankers, the Carnegies, the J.P. Morgans, all of these uh, big financial people decided, hey, let's pull our money out of the stock market now because we're going to create a different kind of government to put more money into our Federal Reserve banking scheme. So what they did is, uh, and I use the example in my book, Deceptions of the Ages, GE stock started at $5 and went up to $60. And then when the bankers and all the rich people in the U.S. pulled their money out, um, that stock went down to $5. So if you were left holding the bag at $60, and if you borrowed to buy that stock, guess what? Well, that's why you had a lot of people jumping out of buildings uh, when the stock market crashed. Now, this is very important, so I'm going to ask you to just stay with me for just a couple more minutes. When the stock market crashed, people in America did not believe, well, they were afraid of the government. They saw what was happening or what had happened while we fought a revolution and what was happening in countries in Europe with these totalitarian governments like the Nazis and the communists were taking over and Americans did not want to be uh, subject to the banks. So uh, Herbert Hoover said, we are not going to deficit spend. And uh, so the country just went further and further into a depression because the people who had the money refused to put it back into the system. All right, to make a long story short, 
Herbert Hoover lost the next election horribly. Franklin Delano Roosevelt came in and massively spent. They they built the Herbert Hoover Hoover. They built the Hoover Dam. Uh, they built uh, all kinds of construction projects. They built the highways across America. They deficit spend. Right for the first time in American history, the American government is borrowing money. Now this is against everything that Americans are for, but. Hey, it puts bread on the table, right? And when it puts bread on the table, people will do pretty much anything and sacrifice any uh, of their principles just so they can pay the mortgage. All right, so let me just explain what happened in a nutshell. Deficit, spending, uh, depression led to World War II, and suddenly at the end of World War II, we bombed everybody's factories. We're the only country producing, right? So how did we get out of the Depression? We bombed everybody's factories, and we were, became the sole producers of cars and toasters and toothbrushes. And uh, one more important thing, we became the currency for oil. So at the end of World War II, we had 30 to 40 years of zero competition or little competition until the 1970s when the Japanese came along. Now, when Barack Obama came into office, the recession that started, in spite of what they ever tell you, that is a huge lie. How that recession started, the uh, Federal Reserve dropped interest rates. And all of the OPEC companies said, if your money is that cheap, then you're going to pay more for oil. And oil went up to over $4 a barrel. And then suddenly, uh, businesses started saying, we can't pay for transportation costs to ship and we can't pay uh, our workers as well. So there was massive layoffs. And then that just did the domino effect on the banking system and everything else because everything was over overborrowed. So let's just fast forward to today, or at least last Thursday when they passed the budget. So the point in all this is, is that in American history, we've always had credit. We've always been able to borrow. But ever since the Reagan administration and uh, the encroachment of these banks over our entire lives, um, the uh, United States, uh, we went off the gold standard in, in the 1973 when we no longer started importing oil. Uh, or when we had to start importing oil, uh, which may, made us a deficit country. So that deficit has just continued to grow and continue to grow. Now, when they passed the budget, they did something that they snuck this by the American people. They Nobody even knows what's in the budget. It's 700 pages long. And even Paul Ryan said nobody's even read it. So um, that is a very serious problem, but I'll tell you what's in that budget that you really need to be concerned about. There is no limit on the debt ceiling. What does that mean? That means that because our money, because we have borrowed and borrowed and borrowed, we're like a broke household that has to go down to yuppie uh, pawn or whatever the name of these uh, pawn shops are, uh, the money tree, lending tree, we've spent all our money, we have no credit. So what we're doing basically now is saying, well, just loan us on our next paycheck, you know? And so that's where the United States is now, but the lending tree or whatever these places are, uh, which are basically China and the Saudi Arabians, they're tired of the United States because they know we're just borrowing money to pay for our uh, uh, military, which we're using to cause trouble all over the world, and they're tired of that. Then they don't want to pay for it, and they've already said so. So um, what this new budget means is that there is no debt ceiling, so now they are just free to print money. Okay, so what does that mean in a democracy and in our Federal Reserve System? That means that anything that is printed, all this debt, there's interest being charged on it by these people that cause, um, like the Rothschilds and the um, people who own the Federal Reserve System, and they are getting ready to make a huge killing uh, once they pull uh, the plug on the stock market. There's a video by Bill Holter. I'm going to post it in my um, credits that uh, if you want more details on what's happening right now, 
um, and the fact that the banks are not loaning each other money, which is a major uh, problem. I'm just going to put that in the links below and I encourage you uh, to watch it. So uh, these are the things that you need to be concerned about because remember in 1929, there was a conservative Republican in office and they sandbagged him. In, 19, in 2016, 2017, and 2018, there is a conservative Republican in office. And the stock market is way overstretched, and there is no way anybody's going to continue to finance this unlimited debt ceiling. So there are going to be repercussions, and they're going to come out soon. And what you're going to see now is people are in the stock market are going to be buying um, because they're going to short uh, the same thing as they did in 2008. They're going to short these... Uh, these default swaps, whatever they are, and um, they're just make, getting ready to make their play because in a few months, uh, they're probably going to pull the string. They're gonna, probably going to pull the plug. So that's Deceptions of the Ages news. We'll see you next time.